plastics are all around us, whether we realize it or not. This is the worst it's ever been. Experts call it a global threat. It was revealed it was stockpiling plastic the public thought was being recycled. The bad news is plastic production is spiraling all over the globe, while only 9% is being recycled. We've got an ugly, dangerous problem, and we're not fearing it sufficiently. We haven't got good recycling at the moment. We've got to do better. From the smallest phone in your pocket to the largest container ships traversing our oceans, plastic is ubiquitous, versatile, and destructive. While this synthetic material has become an essential part of our daily lives, its overuse is causing a lot of harm. Plastic pollutes our oceans, harms wildlife, contaminates our food supply, and overcrowds landfills. From 1950 to 2017, the United Nations Environmental Program, or UNEP, estimated that over 7 billion tons of plastic waste was produced globally. According to the World Economic Forum, over 400 million tons is produced every year. The United Nations Environmental Program also reported that each year, 85% of plastic waste ends up in landfills. The International Union for Conservation of Nature reported that each year, 14 million tons enters our oceans. The blame for this waste cannot be attributed to a diffuse group of individuals, but to a small group of corporations. According to the Plastic Waste Makers Index, only 20 companies are responsible for over half of the world's disposable plastic waste. There are plenty of ways tech companies can cut down on plastic. We'll highlight four of them. There are practical steps to making a greener future without trading away the entire way we build and sell products. And tech leaders are starting to see that measuring and reducing their company's environmental impact can have benefits too. Improving efficiency and the company's reputation. Join me, Justin Fraction, as we hear from industry experts, explore steps being taken by industry leaders such as Microsoft and Dell, and examine the actions being pursued by governments around the world to address this pressing issue of tech impact. Many standards bodies have already set templates for building sustainability goals. After all, the first step to solving the problem is to make a plan. For example, the Electronic Product Environmental Assessment Tool, or EPEED, and the Global Reporting Initiative Standards have detailed wide-ranging environmental and sustainability benchmarks. These vary widely depending on industry. GRI, for example, takes into account energy use, the rights of indigenous people, biodiversity, waste, and more. Focusing back on plastics, sometimes matters of jurisdiction get complicated. After all, the person who may do a sustainability audit on the cafeteria is often not also visiting the factory. Mike Zamis, Chief Product Officer at ESG Platform and Consultancy Sphera, advised that companies need to be sure their ESG measures are repeatable, measurable, transparent, and auditable. For instance, Dell set itself several in-house long-term goals regarding environmental, social, and corporate governance, or ESG for short. Zero carbon emissions by 2050 was one of many, along with having 100% of their packaging, 50% of their products made from renewable or recyclable materials, marks their shorter-term goal out to 2030. They're also working with Next Wave, an organization focused on keeping plastic out of waterways. After all, Dell Global Product Manager and Sustainability Strategist Katie Green said, Materials fished out of the ocean have been broken down by salt and sun and can't be used. Collecting ocean-bound plastic before it hits the water means more material is available to put back into the economy. Therefore, Dell tries to bake recyclability into their designs from the beginning. The lid of Dell Latitude's 5000 laptop is 21% bioplastic. This plastic comes from tall oil, a byproduct from the paper-making process. Another 20% is reclaimed carbon fiber from the aerospace industry. Moving plastics around between industries like this lengthens their useful lives. That in turn contributes to early efforts to create a circular economy. In this economic structure, many products and materials are recycled, refurbished, or repaired in order to get as much use out of each as possible. We've talked about keeping plastic in use longer. How about cutting plastic from products entirely? 
Many companies start out their journey into reducing plastic in their packaging before moving on to electronics products themselves. Green also detailed a project to eliminate plastic bags from packaged adapters. Originally, Dell's adapters would come boxed with one plastic bag on the power cord and one on the adapter itself. Now they use paper banding around both. It took a lot of trial and error and is still an ongoing project. Some early drafts of this design used rubber or paper integrated into the box itself. Paper banding was chosen so that the final product could withstand scratches and scuffing. After all, protecting the adapter is the main purpose of the packaging. In order to make the change, Dell first approached their existing list of packaging suppliers and asked them what was available. Afterward, they reached out to new suppliers looking for those doing innovative work in sustainable packaging specifically. Green says this process helped to drive Dell suppliers to think outside of the box. The company needed to look at their sub-suppliers too, to be sure ESG standards were met down the line. This drives excitement and interest in sustainable packaging across the chain and opens up new business, she said. Overall, the change was not as difficult as the Dell designers expected, with a lot of options. For example, Microsoft's Aspire Vero laptop uses 30% recycled plastic on the chassis and 50% recycled plastic on the keyboard caps. They also don't use any paint on this laptop line at all. This reduces the chance for it to produce volatile organic compounds, which can vaporize into the air as pollution. They're regulated by the United States Clean Air Act because they can dissipate into the air from the device during manufacture or destruction. Meanwhile, Apple aspires to stop using plastics in packaging completely by 2025. Other materials commonly used for everyday life can be recycled as consumer products too. Samsung recently started using recycled plastics and discarded fishing nets throughout their product lines. Welcome to the reuse part of Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. Another way to cut down on plastics is to not have to make new packaging at all. Zamus recommends an attempt to return to the milkman method, where customers return empty milk bottles to be filled again. It's all about making recycling easier. Incentives like putting a return fee on a bottle or making the products more robust could help eliminate the need for new products too. Most plastic products are built with an intended life of one year or less, but the chemicals last forever. They're a victim of their own success, Zamus said. That one year lifespan can get in the way of attempts to reuse plastic. Part of the challenge, Green points out, is getting the same material properties as first run plastic. Most consumer recycled plastic can vary in quality a lot based on its origin. Customers have certain assumptions about material properties, Green said. One does expect a laptop to be durable, after all. It also needs to meet specific durability standards for manufacturing. These limit how much of the plastic mix can be bio-based or post-consumer. One reliably similar source is CD disc cases, which are no longer in demand but were produced in huge amounts. Post-industrial or pre-consumer plastic like industrial scrap should also be part of the conversation. These can be used across industries. Despite all the solutions and methods these tech companies have developed to tackle the plastic problem, all still face a lot of challenges in turning sustainability from a dream into a practical plan. Plus, regulations in this area can change rapidly. The United Kingdom put a plastic tax in effect in 2022, which penalizes any plastic product manufactured in or imported into the UK that does not contain at least 30% recycled plastic. The US Department of the Interior issued an order in 2022 banning single-use plastics on department-managed land by 2032. California had a similar law to reduce single-use plastics over time. To sell the idea to executive teams of other influential technology companies, phasing out single-use plastics may need to be framed as innovation. The first company which figures out how to swap out electronics like milk bottles may grab a key segment of customers invested in reducing their consumption while still having the newest model. Ultimately, the reduce part of reduce, reuse, or recycle may prove to be the greatest challenge. But efforts like these show that it's part of a serious conversation happening at the enterprise level today. Thanks for watching. This is a new series my team and I are producing, so please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 
We plan to post tech impact videos once a month, so be sure to be on the lookout for more in the future. In the meantime, you can learn more about all the topics we discuss here on the channel at techrepublic.com. Until next time.